a hawk? Look at It's not a hawk. <laughs> what is it? It's a buzzard. Oh. <laughs> I think you're calling a hawk. <laughs> We've gathered the troops at my house and we're headed up to the top of the mountain. We're gonna do a cable rail. First we gotta tear the old railings down though. I smell burning oil. Oh, that's my, that's my baby. That's my baby. That's a smell of Yeah, Tahoe. that's a problem. Smell of Tahoe. <laughs> We've reached the top of the mountain here, and we're assessing the railing we're going to replace. What do you think, Jamie? Well, all in all, actually, this deck is not bad. Not bad. But there are a few little gremlins, let's say. <laughs> let's get into it. Look, uh, these top caps, we realized, are actually spruce material. So that's like interior framing material that and got how used. did you figure that out? Well, a couple things. First of all, this spot right here was kind of a giveaway. Um, and that does not look like treated wood. Also, you can tell right away by the grain and by the size of the knots that this is not yellow pine. And yellow pine is the kind of wood they use for treated wood. So it's kind of a dead giveaway. Yeah, but it is painted has these up. little knots uh, and a smoother grain, whereas this yellow pine has big knots and they use the yellow pine. They probably figured, yeah, they figured probably that painting it up real good would would keep it protected from the weather and uh, on the areas under the roof, it's actually in good shape. It's totally fine. Out here where it gets rained on every time it rains, it's not fine. And uh, we're gonna replace it with treated wood. I think these guys are itching to just destroy I'd something. I'd like get up there. Uh, go around. Hey, you want, can we bring this? Yeah, that's why I brought it. What are we cutting? Uh, just okay. whatever you like. <laughs> My apologies, guys, but we're going to be having to, you know, no, no, come in and out. Okay, we'll try not to get your floor destroyed. Oh, no, we're we didn't bring uh, anything to cover it, unfortunately. That's fine. <laughs> I didn't realize it was only inside access, so. Yeah, and it's St. Patty's Day, by the way. Right, St. Patty's Day. And they're <laughs> you got it too, yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, we're going to get going. All right, thank you, guys. Yep. What do you think about using nails on the pickets? Should we be doing that? Putting them in is great, putting them out sucks. You got the shot? Yeah. It's, oh, dude, it's... <laughs> hey, let's go over some camera let, basics. Let Jamie video. <laughs> so uh, we got we got corrected in the comments a little bit about our camera terminology. Oh, the pan. pan. Yeah, all right. So That's... so pan is, is left and right. Okay. Okay. And then tilt. It's up and down. Okay. Tilt. Got that. And then let's see what was the other one. Zoom is called tracking. Track, <laughs> track in. That's wow. That's tight. That's, we do the manual zoom. That's a tight <laughs> angle there or something. Yeah. Track in, track out, tilt, pan. That's I'm all still there is just to it. Say zoom. All right. Fine. Zoom in. Pan <laughs> over here. Pan down there. Pan up here. Too delicate for me. <laughs> Trying to be neat and everything, I would just rather just start wailing out. Ooh, is it cedar? Is it cedar? Smell it. Yep, that's cedar. It's cedar. How about that? So after this smell test, we determined that these top caps were cedar which is way more expensive to buy in this area. So we don't see people doing that a lot. They do look nice and clean though. This one's still rotted though on the end where it could soak up water through the end grain. Yeah. And uh, so we'll have to replace a couple of these, but I think the rest of them, the covered ones that are good, we'll just reuse them. I mean, cedar is pretty good for exterior. I think this. Yeah, so. I can tell. <laughs> Usually. <laughs> this might have been a bum board. I don't know. This is something else that I can't say I've ever seen, not even one time. These pickets are cedar too. Yeah. I've I can never, tell. I've I can never smell. I've never seen those available by locally. I have never seen it either. So uh, he can use this as kindling and make a nice campfire. Burn it up? Yeah, you're not supposed to burn pressure treated wood if you well, didn't know because yeah, the chemicals yeah. in it. Yeah. Uh, but cedar, man, is the best kindling ever. Oh, gosh. Sneaking up on me like that. So these 
guys weren't messing around. <laughs> like one, two, three, four, five, six or seven nails in the end of each one of these things. And um, now we can't get them. Well, just saws all straight That's down. What I was thinking. We've got all of our. Wait, I don't know if I like the backdrop. <laughs> it's yeah. terrible. <laughs> We've got all the pickets and the old top caps taken out. Now we're going to go reinstall just a single two by six top cap with an intermediate post to cut these sections down from like nine foot span to like a five foot max for these cables. And that'll just help if someone would try to spread the cables on a shorter span, like five feet, you can't really spread them. So we're gonna reuse all the materials we can because lumber is really expensive. We're gonna have to go buy a few things. Jamie's gone to the store now, which is like 30 minutes down the mountain. So he'll be back like tomorrow. Um, and this existing post will set our heights. So we'll measure this, snap a line across the other posts, and that'll be the bottom of our top cap. I think that's what we got to do. We thought about setting up the rotary laser to shoot this completely level and mark the top cap. But what I think is this deck may not be completely level. So we're just going to go point to point using the deck as our reference. Because if the deck's a little out of level, we want these cables to match it instead of be, it would actually look worse if the cables were level and the deck isn't. So that's why we're just doing the old chalk box and that's gonna work pretty good. You can see how much difference the location of our top cap's gonna be than what it was, probably five eighths of an inch. And that's because we pulled this from end to end, a straight line, and they probably just measured up at each point to get these, and that's not gonna look as good with this single top cap. It'll look like rickety road. Just FYI, around here, a code passing railing like this on a residential place like this is 36 inches off the deck to the top of the top cap. For a uh, commercial, it'd be 42. And that's just a good thing to know if you're gonna do something on your own place in the North Carolina area. We're reusing these top caps because they're in pretty good shape. We will have to wood fill and restain or caulk and restain the holes, but we don't wanna mar this up really bad with the hammer while we're pulling the nails. So we're using something to pry against. That's a nice little flat bar, putting that on the top. I'm hooking with the hammer and then I'm prying against that and so I don't mar the wood really badly with the sharp corners of that hammer. So otherwise it'd look pretty bad if we just did that number. So we made the mistake of not labeling where these went. We're just gonna do a little guess and check here. Uh, nope. Nope. Try again. I think that's that it. Could be, well, let's check the end. It could yep. be pretty nice. Nope. So that one's this one. Or is that it? No. No? Okay, so this is this one. Is that one down there short or tight? Short. There we go. This one should be. Let's take a short break to thank our sponsor for today's episode, AG1 by Athletic Greens. So thank you to Athletic Greens, we really appreciate it. And if you don't know what AG1 by Athletic Greens is already, it's a nutrition company that has created a movement around simplifying your health. And it's not just for athletes, it's for life leads like busy moms and dads and people like you and me. My wife and I have been using AG1 for quite a while now, and the main thing I get out of it is extra energy. On top of the energy I already get from drinking a bunch of coffee, this makes me feel even better, and that's the main reason I like to use it. AG1 has 75 vitamins, minerals, whole foods, sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens in one convenient daily serving, and this special blend of ingredients helps your body's nutritional needs and supports gut health, immunity, energy, recovery, focus, and aging. AG1 is also incredibly convenient. It's just one scoop or one travel pack in eight ounces of water every day and that's it. And here's the bottom line for most people, AG1 tastes good. You can drink it, I can drink it. It's the best tasting supplement of its kind that I've ever tried personally. So if you're interested in trying it, go to the link in our description now to get a year's supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. Again, Athletic Greens is going to give my community an immune supporting free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Make sure to check out the link in our description. Thank you again so much to AG1 by Athletic Greens. We appreciate your support. Let's get back to work. We're reinstalling these top caps and I'm gonna toe screw it with these GRK R4 screws, which are, uh, they're good for outside, good for pressure treated material, and they're good for structural use, not just like screwing down deck boards. So that'll be safe if someone were to really hit this. The screw's not gonna sna uh, snap at least. So we're just gonna get that in position, toe screw, 
two or three from each side. This thing is, uh, needs to be pushed out to be plumb. And instead of trying to like push it and hold it while I'm getting a number here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a temporary brace on it to hold it exactly where I want it. And then once this is fastened on the top, then I can just remove the brace and I don't have to worry about it. That's a good idea. Yeah. Due to the design of these screws with the smooth part of the shank, these screws can pull really hard when you hit them home. So pro tip is if you're toe screwing from the side like this, and, and what I tend to do is get one started and tacked, but don't hit it home because you will tend to draw the board in the direction you're putting the screw. Then I'll come around and get the other side tacked the same way. And actually I'm gonna take that one home and then I can just go ahead and finish that one out because now basically the board is being braced by that other screw. I taught him that one. <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> Sure we're gonna paint this whole thing but we are gonna touch up where the cables are gonna go through so that's gonna be hard to touch up later eh yeah what are you pointing the camera at me for <laughs> <laughs> paint guy won't it be hard john has got it before the cables go in we we've got a weird spot with this one post it's the only post that isn't in alignment with the other posts meaning that the outside of this post is about an inch and a half out Whereas the edge of this one's flush with the decking and that's not gonna work because then our top cap will be crooked compared to the deck. So we're gonna take this off and turn to the, it has the five and a half inch way that way so it matches that post. You know what I just realized? is that your railings are true work pant brown. I mean, it's like a perfect, <laughs> Yeah, we, it's we exactly. Definitely pick that out. <laughs> it's real nice, I like it. It's time to drill all the holes in the post for the cable to run through. We're using this long bit here. It's a quarter inch bit for the eighth inch cable. Now I've heard this called an aircraft bit. Where's the wings? I don't know anything. It does, there's no aircraft <laughs> about it, but maybe some smart person out there can tell us why they would call this an aircraft bit because I have no idea. All right. Well, it'll go all the way through a post is why we like it. But we are going to drill through both yeah. sides of the six by sixes. Yeah. Even though we could drill from one side all the way through, um, we found that it's more accurate It'll to sort of measure. wander. Yeah. You could get sideways or up and down really way off, way easy. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> way bad, way fast. You'll mess okay. it all up. I didn't, I didn't mean to make it sound hey, so shut bad. Up, they're listening. Oh man, the homeowners are watching. <laughs> Wait a minute. Way bad. So bad. <laughs> Dang it. Every time. God. I got drilled through this post from both sides, and that was way harder. It was almost impossible, really, to even make them connect from both sides using you know your eyeball to to plumb and level the drill and all that. Um, I drilled through a couple spots where it wasn't the same spot on the other side thinking that I was gonna come out the same hole and I didn't. And um, also we're gonna use these post protectors. So we need to bore out the very ends of these holes to three eighths. These will go in and kind of cover the, you know, the gnarl of the edge of these holes. Yeah, it has a little shoulder on it, right? Yeah, it does. You can see yeah. the shoulder. There you go. Uh, right there. So that'll make it look nicer. Uh, this, is, this is pretty challenging though, drilling through and hitting. I'm thinking maybe we should just drill from both sides with this thing. You know, we got a lot better chance to hit. All right, let's look at what these look like here. So, looks good. Looks better. We've got all of our posts in, all of our intermediate posts, all the holes are drilled, and we've got our post protectors put in. So I wanted to take a quick look at the termination ends for our cable rail. And this is the Axis system by Haas Stainless available on erigging.com and we've used it before. So one end is just this termination that screws to the post and we just swage our cable into this termination right here. The other end is our turnbuckle, which you swage the cable into right here. And let's demonstrate the turnbuckle, Jono. Both ends are fixed. You turn this thing one direction and it will shorten or lengthen 
your cable, basically. These are threaded opposite turnbuckles. So that's how you tension the cable, and we just stick like a little Allen key through there to do that while we hold both ends with something so we don't spin the cable. If you spin the cable, it can actually hold tension and then later zzz, unwind and loosen your cables. So it's very important that you only turn the turnbuckle from what I remember. You got so many bits. I'm Look sorry. at all these bits. I'm sorry. How'd that go? Zzz. Oh, yeah, that was <laughs> <laughs> if you if you throw these way way in here to start with you don't have as much adjustment later to tension the cable which likely tensioning it is the direction it's going to need to go not loosening so we'll start them right about there <laughs> what is line all right we're good there Back again. Back. Check it the record. Let's begin. Out. If you add these before the cable goes through. Oh, I see the cable. Yeah. I see it. It's just I not one I, I see it, but it won't go through. Oh, come on, Ray. I don't want to mess the cable up. Which way do I need to spin it? Oh, it's so close. Oh no, he just gave up. Oh, yep, there it is. So we need to pull them out. There's our problem. That's why we cut these a little over length so we can chop that off right now. Get a nice clean start. Uh oh. Okay, now we're looking better and see if that works. Oh yeah. On to the next, on to the next one. Jason, yeah. I need a snip. These cutters are no good, I got. You fix that for me? Come on, bro, you can fit that in there, can't you? <laughs> yeah, uh, no, that's not gonna work. What did you use? I got these cutters uh, here. <laughs> that's what I did that with. There you go. Give me, a, give me a nice clean one. Yeah. Oh, here we go. got one wire. Oh, come on, bro, yeah, it's good. perfect. You're good. Here's our swaging tool, and this is Tyler Tool, and Tyler's the guy from Haas E-Rigging that we know, and I think that might be named after him, cool enough. So all we're doing is just uh, figuring out the right one here, inserting this into the swage end, uh, and it'll only go so far, and then we're using the eighth inch cable setting, putting it on there, and I'm being real careful not to tweak <laughs> Our terminations here. I'm gonna go for two really? yeah. swages. One, two, and that's it. You could uh, swage these terminations on here and then thread them into the termination, but then you have to spin the whole cable down the line to do that. So we're trying doing it with them in place. I think it's working pretty good so far. You know, for me, it's hard to believe that just squeezing the cable into one of those swage ends will hold it. For as much tension as you pull. Yeah, I'm amazed too. Whoever came up with that idea. Mr. Swage. <laughs> Mr. Swagey. Patrick Swagey. He, he may have been a betting man. He's swagering a lot. <laughs> okay. I guess. I think we already said that once. Well, you can't say it too many times. I, I don't know. Think. I mean, cable, there's only so many cable rail jokes <laughs> that we can come up with in a short period of time here. I'm sure the guys in the business, though, they probably got all kinds of cable rail jokes. You know, it's like when you go to the dentist and you ask them, hey, I bet you got tons of teeth jokes right and they're like <laughs> no so we're checking right now to see how well i put these in there because <laughs> sometimes they get crossed up but because i put them in they're golden yeah and if you forget some of these post protectors is halfway down the line somewhere and then you know yeah. cut the end and crimp it on there right what's gonna happen ray well then you gotta redo the whole thing you gotta just cut it yeah. gotta... pull it out right which sucks <laughs> we've got all of our turnbuckles installed now we're going to clip these cables and tension everything oh and you know what start in the middle, start in the middle. that's what tyler said so uh this is the point where i could get things crossed up three we'll call four the middle one two three four <laughs> and all i'm doing is making a mark there's these little 
marks on this end of the swage. And um, I'm just gonna mark the cable there as I'm kind of pulling it tight. And that's our cut mark, cut guy. Oh God, this is scary. Yep. Yep. Okay. One, two, three, four. <laughs> do that every time. Okay. Oh, anyway, so James, so yeah, my son has to get sleep over one of his friend's house. Well, it comes out that his friend is a girl. Yep. Thanks. Pretty smart. That's what you get to Real do. man of That's genius. What you get to Look forward to, bud. We're finally tensioning here, and <laughs> we're just using this cotter pin. And the real important thing, though, is to start in the middle and then go alternating out, kind of like how you tighten lugs on a car rim. It's where your brake rotor doesn't get warped. And it's more like a head gasket. Or a head gasket, yeah. yeah. And the other thing is to make sure and, and grab the cable in with something to keep the whole cable from spinning because it could spin, and then I would have a memory and basically spin back someday and loosen the whole thing up. So I forgot where I was here, there, the, okay, I'm there. So I'm getting this, getting my cotter pin. <laughs> this looks so uh, unprepared here, but this is really what we have. Cotter pin, there we go. And this is drawing it tight. And I'm gonna get, you know, snug, and then I'm gonna move up. So this is pretty easy, actually. Yeah, this is like the easiest easy. job in the world. We should just do cable rails instead of building houses. Cable rail the country, we can call it. Yeah, there you go, cable rail the country. Yeah, That'd be a great show. That's the loose one. That's literally what I'm doing to see which ones need to be tightened. Uh, listening to the note it makes, and the lower the note, the looser. So I got one low note, and we'll fix it. Well, it just so happens they used like trim head screws on these so that they're real discreet. And these are different. These are for a pitched section, like on the stair down here. Yeah, it has a little swivel. So no problem. The uh, the tip of the uh, what do you call this? Driver. The driver. There you go. It won't actually fit in here when it's spinning. It, yeah. It'll fit in there one way, but when it spins, it won't fit. So I'm just gonna take a grinder and actually shave this down so it'll fit. Yeah. We're doing a bunch of funny business here because. This angled section, the little endings have a little bit of offset, meaning they go horizontal for a minute, then they turn up, and here they go horizontal for a minute, then turn down. So we had to shift our layouts to account for that so that our, our top piece is the right distance and parallel to the top cap, if that makes any sense. So we installed these first two, stretched a string line between them, measured top and bottom to make sure we're running parallel. Now we're good, and we're gonna go on down with our layout. So. That's a little bit more confusing part that you could mess up on, and we almost did. Get this in there here. I think this is how it goes. Oh, look at my screwdriver. <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, I did get one here. All right, this is called the donut, by the way. All right, now you can actually see what this looks like, the donut in there allows this to pivot at any angle that your stairs might be, so it doesn't matter what the pitch is. Now it makes sense. Yeah, and the offset, I know he explained it, but if this thing actually attached right here at the wood, we wouldn't have to deal with the offset, but it's this distance of flat. Yep, right there. The distance of flat, that's what throws it off. And uh, the first one or two that I put together- This matches your, uh, your hand up. real nice, all the it stainless. Doesn't, the stainless, I'm, yeah. I'm a big fan of the stainless, <laughs> You gotta get a actually. couple of those dangling off here. Yeah, I could attach them on there for something, who knows.
Hey, thanks for checking out our video today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to give us a thumbs up. That helps us out on YouTube big time. Thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next one.